it's not often you get to meet one of your heroes. And I never met Duesenberg or Bentley or Enzo Ferrari or even Fruccio Lamborghini. He died just a little too soon. But this is one of my heroes, Christian Koenigsegg. You know, it's really exciting to see a car that is one man's vision. Because every car, all cars now are sort of designed by committee. Gordon Murray's car, I think, was one man's vision. And of course, the Koenigsegg is one man's vision. And it, it's really a fantastic car. He's been on our website a couple of times. Tell us about this. This is the one of one, correct? Right, right. That, yes. that would be real limited production, wouldn't it? It's, well, yes. <laughs> so, so it's not called the one of one because it's just one car. We are actually made six of them, which right. is very few, plus our test prototype. Right. But the one to one is one horsepower per one kilo of curb weight. Right. So that's 1,360 horsepower and 1,360 kilos, right. which becomes 1-1. One, one. And right. also 1,360 horsepower is 1 megawatt. Tell me about the transmission. That's what I find fascinating. Yeah. So on, on this car, we have a, a seven-speed right. uh, kind of dual clutch transmission. Right. In the front, we have a, a dual disc dry clutch, right. which is very, very smooth for being a dry clutch. And then on the exit of the input shaft, we have an 11 disc wet clutch. Right. So when we open uh, the main clutch to shift, we slow down the input shaft with the 11 disc clutch super quickly so that when the gears are going to be synchronized, they're pre-synchronized right. uh, from that action. So we get basically zero synchronization time, but we have the smoothness of synchronization. Right. It's almost like a pre-selector. You selected it before yes. you selected it, and Correct. then boom, Correct. it kicks in. All right, So that, cool. that saves us weight from doing a full-out DCT. Uh, so we had to have a gearbox that could take uh, 1,500 newton meters of torque or over 1,000 foot-pounds. Uh, but it, we didn't have space uh, to have something really big and we didn't want to weigh the car down. Right, right. So this was the way to do it. So you get really crisp, fast shifts, but without the bulkiness of a DCT. I love that you're always coming up with new cars and new concepts. A lot of people will just make the same car for 10 years or 15 right. years and do updates and do the GT version and do all. But you come up with new concepts and new engineering all the time. That's what I find fascinating. It's it, it's really an engineering company. Just the doors alone. <laughs> uh, you know, the Koenigsegg door is one of my favorite engineering exercises. Can we open this just of to course, show people how it works? Yeah. So this little button under here, the window drops first to clear, and then it goes up. Yeah, I mean, look. How cool is that? And it's pretty interesting. It's also hydraulically dampened. Yeah. So even if you use all the force you can to throw it open, it just stops like Oh, that. I see. Oh, very nice. So you can't really screw it up. That way the valet... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't want to <laughs> give this to the valet. Like no, no. <laughs> but I mean, just the concept of this door. I have never... I've seen dihedral and I've seen others, but this is the first time I've ever yeah. seen this. And it actually clears the whole entrance without going out very much. It's right. And, relatively and close and to you don't, you don't do a Britney Spears getting in and out right. of it. It makes it real easy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just fantastic. Just wonderful, wonderful cars. Um, when will this be available in America? Well, this is actually the last of the six cars, okay. and this is going to America. It this is. is going to okay. Florida. Oh, okay. So uh, we're very happy to, well, to have that over here. Right, right. Very nice. So, what the next generation of cars will be? What? Well, so we have a, 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 a smaller brother of this right. car, which has uh, 1,200 horsepower. Right. Yeah, so very good. And then we're doing the Regera, our first right. hybrid version, where right. we managed to remove the traditional transmission yeah. to make it less uh, compromised weight and space-wise to other hybrids. Uh, and we managed to, for the first time in uh, automotive history, to have direct drive from the combustion engine to the rear wheels with no gearbox. That's what I was thinking about when I mentioned this. That's the yeah. transmission I was thinking. Tell right. me about that. I, I find that fascinating because everybody does a hybrid now. McLaren has a, a kind of supercharger that spins the transmission, right. which tricks the turbos. And it, but, yeah. but, but you do away with all that, don't you? Yeah, so I, 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 I don't like just to add things. So if we right. add something, I would like to remove something right, else to right. keep the things compact and light and sporty. So uh, I've thought about this for many, many years. And I have a Tesla and a P85D and it's yeah. fantastic response with its electrical motors. Right. I thought, how do I get this technology into our cars without sacrificing what they are? Right. And then I came up with a very simple idea of putting one electrical motor on the crankshaft of the engine right. to give another 400 newton meters of torque from... So that will spin the crank? Okay. Yeah, it's a starter motor, a generator, right. and torque fill and everything. Sure. And it's very powerful. Right. It's 200 horsepower and, and 400 newton meters of torque at, at zero RPM. PM. So, uh, and then we have a uh, hydraulic clutch which we can open and close, right. and then we have an open differential, right. and on, on the output shaft of the differential we have an electrical motor on each side, nice. so we can do torque vectoring there, right. we do electric reverse when the clutch is open, and we do takeoff. 
and as soon as you're up to a speed where you can start closing the uh, hydraulic clutch, we start running together with the combustion one engine. On one. Okay. And I then see. we have the 400 Newton meters torque at really low RPM from the electric yeah. motors, and as soon as you get up to RPM, the combustion engine starts to build in. Yeah. So we have 1100 horsepower combustion engine, 700 horsepower electrical motors wow. working together. Wow, that's fantastic. So it's yeah. quite interesting. And that's fascinating because when you're spinning the crank, I'll say that works as a starter motor, so there's no traditional sort of Bendix drive Correct. or any of that. It just, you it, just go. Yeah, yeah, immediately. Wow, it's just wonderful. Just wonderful. How many people in your company? How many engineers do they have? Uh, right now we are 22 engineers okay. yeah. and we're just around 90 people in total. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing that you can move so quickly and develop these things so fast. Right. Yeah. Right. It's, it's really wonderful. This is the world's first top-mounted active rear wing. Okay. It doesn't have any pylons underneath the important surface. The oh, I see, I see. There's no, because exactly. most come up from here and move this way. Exactly. And then what happens when you have something underneath the wing, you destroy somewhat of the most important area of the wing, which is the underside. Right. So on Le Mans type cars, you always see the pylons going up and over right. to keep the underside clean. So we thought we make it over forward and it's actually an active uh, carbon rod in here, so it's aero braking wow. and active setting uh, the different speeds and depending on what you do. So we get the, the top mounted effect mm -hmm. and the activeness for the first time ever. And you've got vents here to, to yeah, get to breathe when you're okay. driving slowly and these direct the air when you're driving fast to clean right. it up for the wing. So we have at around 180 miles per hour, we have around uh, 1,200 pounds of downforce. <laughs> it's an active chassis, each yeah. individual shock absorber is active and we have a 3D communication and a Koenigsegg cloud, so we can download track data to the cars right. and have what we call a preactive setup. So in front of each corner and straight, we can lower or raise the car or lower the wing on a straight because it knows where it is. See, that's what I love about your company, because most people, and even Toyota did this, they develop a car, it takes five years to develop it, by the time it comes out, They've got last year's transmission, the single right. clutch here, but because they can't keep up. I mean, you seem to be able, because you're a small company, you can right. move quickly and do all these things. Yeah, you know, you're not coming out with, uh, I remember when I got my SLR, it, it came out in 2005, but it had, you know, the old kind of phone, you had this, they had it all right. the, the previous, because right. it took, the gestation period was so long for the car. Correct. You know? Whereas you move very quickly and develop these things. And one of the reasons we can move so quickly is that we do all the electronic hardware, software, firmware, everything in house. So right. we're not dependent on big, large suppliers that are used to working with really big car companies. Yeah. So when yeah. a small car company asks them, can you do this and that, they're usually not very responsive. Yeah. But as we develop all of that in house, we just do whatever we want. And that really saves time. And tell me about the brakes. The traditional sort of carbon fiber weave or some uh, trick yeah, thing? Well, they're quite interesting because they have, uh, compared to most other uh, ceramic carbon discs, they have the same materials throughout. So if you do get a scratch or something, yeah. you can actually regrind them three, four times before okay. you have to change it, which is a great thing. The other thing is we actually manufacture our own brake calipers in-house okay. with ceramic pistons. And we have the world record in stopping from 200 miles per hour to zero yeah. is 7.1 seconds. So they really do work. Wow. And these are carbon fiber wheels? Yeah. Okay. Our own made carbon fiber wheels, hollow spoke. Well, it's just beautiful. And tell us the symbol again. This is yes, Family Crest? That's Family Crest, right. yeah. So I remember we were over this once. So the, uh, the Koenigsegg family is very small. We're like 20 people in the whole world today right. or something like that. Uh, and and uh, it had this uh, crest uh, since hundreds of years back. Right. So I said when I started a car company, you need a symbol. First of all, the name was a little bit weird, but that was my name, so yeah, yeah, it is what yeah. it is. Well, and then we had this, so why not use it? You've got to start multiplying. Take a break right. and have a bunch of kids, because we've got to keep the Koenig thing going. Right, exactly. Christian, always a pleasure, well, my friend. As Congratulations. Always, nice it's, really, it's really wonderful to meet a real uh, engineer. It's really oh, thank good. Thank you. Thank Enjoy you, the show, friend. and thank, thank you for coming. You, thank you. We're here with Rob Singer from Singer Design. Uh, you know Rob, over the years we've done your cars. Showed you how hard it is to do these cars. Remember him? He was young, handsome. Look at him now. Look, look at the wear and tear. Can't shave anymore. I got crappy clothes. He's got a broken arm. Building these things is, is a horrible job. It's a lot of work. And this is this is what you you age ten years for every normal year when you build these things. You cheeky but, bugger. Yeah, that's right. But, but but the work is in the cars. And better better the car look good than you. Correct. Thank you, Jay. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We, we put the money up on the screen. Now yeah. tell us what we have here. This is the very. This is the first U.S. customer Targa that we are okay. we have for, we've, we've, we've done. We've restored. So what year are we starting? A '68? What year are we? No, this is no. this isn't quite what it looks. This is a 1991 Porsche. Oh, okay, Targa. 91. Okay. And uh, so we have the best of the air-cooled era all in one. Right. Car. Okay. Very good. Very yeah. good. What motor? 
It's got a four-liter engine made by Ed Pink Racing Engines, okay. uh, guys that I think you know well, and yeah. um, it's got a six-speed uh, transmission. Everything on the car is carbon fiber. The doors, we keep the doors steel for uh, crash impact right. uh, safety. And how but, much lighter than stock is the car? About 500 pounds. 500 pounds lighter, and how much more horsepower than stock? About another 150 horsepower. Okay, it's very good. So it gets out of its own way quite well. The, the car over here went around Laguna Seca, yeah. uh, the, the ninth fastest road car ever around Laguna Seca in the hands of Lee Keen, uh, wow. the, great, the great racing driver. So with the four liter engine, it's a it's a bit of a rocket. Now tell me what we have here. This plastic, uh, I'm not familiar with that. I haven't seen that before. That's one of our own touches. I had it on a little hot, uh, 911 hot rod that I built for myself about 10 years ago, and I loved it. And other people seem to like it. So this is a touch. It allows a little bit of protection of the engine, but also allows you to see the engine. Right, I see. All Usually right. there'd be a mesh there. Which, uh, is this a Porsche color or, or a different? This color? is a 1982 color called Casablanca beige. Okay. And the outside? Uh, outside filler, it's yeah. from the 67 911R and the 72 cars had the, the filler here. Now so they only did this one year, correct? 1972. Because people kept putting gas in there. That is the that is the rumor. We've heard that that was more of a rumor than truth, yeah. but uh, it, it, it made for a good story. Well, you know, it does happen because <laughs> I know people had Lamborghini mirrors, and you open the front to put gas in, yep. and people putting water in there thinking it was a radio. Oh, so there's a lot of idiots. <laughs> You know, a lot of idiots out there. Well, as the usual, high standard, beautiful upholstery. Now, this is a pattern that never appeared in Porsche, did it? No, P Porsche did a, a were well known for doing embossed vinyl basket right. weave in their in their interior. So we did a we did an homage to that with uh, proper leather, wo woven leather. To and which brakes are you using? We are using currently these are the uh, the big red Brembo brakes that okay. were that appeared on the turbos in the late 1990s, and we've just yeah. uh, we're just launching a carbon uh, a carbon brake uh, package. For Is that basically the same engines in this unit? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what it looks like sure. in the car, and then we'll see it out of the car. And this is kind of the signature piece for your cars, isn't it? Yeah, so th this is, this is um, so the case, uh, so we start with the, with the uh, 90, early 1990s 964, which came right. with a beautiful 3.6 liter engine. We keep the case, we kind of get rid of most of the other stuff. This is through our, through our Ed Pink racing engines, we developed a super lightweight piston and uh, cylinder set and uh, lightweight Carrillo rods. Right. Um, we're using a, uh, a throttle body system, uh, injection system from Kinsler. We use the uh, plenum from the, uh, the air intake plenum from the 997 GT3 RS. So it has a lot of modern thinking, but yeah. it's still quintessential. Well, those are all Carrillo. the best suppliers. We use Kindler when we did our fuel injection on our Maserati. We go to Ed Pink for all our motors because they- The best. I mean, legendary. The well, best. let's take a look at the engine out of the car. Come on. So the, these, these are the new throttle bodies that are just right. like works of art. They're just gorgeous yeah. little things. And uh, we've, we've up, we, we were using Gen V throttle bodies before, which yeah. were great, but the, the injector wasn't in quite the right spot, so we've lowered the injector a little bit. And you really have to be divorced to have this in the living room, don't you? <laughs> yeah, there's no married guy that could ever have this in the house, but it, it, <coughs> it would look great in the house. Yes. Yes. It was nicely done. So we, 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 you know, there's a lot, we pay a lot of attention to finishes and details, but at the same time, we want it to be functional. Right. And a, a Porsche has to be a, a bomb-proof exactly. thing that you use, exactly. but it can be beautiful as well. So. You know, when we first met Rob, he had a little shop around the corner, and in the intervening years, intervening years it's really grown, hasn't it? I mean, it you've has, got quite yes. a waiting list, don't you? We have a waiting list now of about 18 months. We're, wow. trying, we're trying to keep that under two years, but right. we're struggling a little bit, but we're getting there. No, We've that's moved great. into a bigger facility. We've got yeah. 50 employees now. It's uh, it's very exciting. So next time we're seeing we have a full beard and two broken arms. So, <laughs> so as you can see, it takes its toll. <laughs> I'll just I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> Rob, congratulations on all your success. Thank it's you. It's really sir. exciting to see a, a Burbank-based company. Because I always thought Singer came from, from Germany. When I first read about them, I just assumed, oh, it was a German tuner. And oh, and he, he's less than like three miles from my shop. So it's really exciting to see the company grow and become world famous. Because everybody seems to know Singer now. So it's, it's They terrific. do. It's, it's humbling. It's yeah. very, very humbling. No, it's, it's wonderful. It's great. Thank so, you so much. Congratulations. Well, here at the Acura stand at... Uh, at the Quail, uh, which of course is Pebble Beach. John Aketa, you're the, what is your official title? 
I'm the vice president and general manager at Acker Division at okay. Hunt America. Yep. But you uh, you started in design. That's where that's your area, right? Yes, I just took on this role uh, not too long ago, but uh, I cut my teeth at Honda and Acker doing design. I just yeah. left my division director over there. Yeah. Boy, it's a really nice looking design, nice clean design. Uh, tell me about the brakes. The brakes, it's, you know, what can we say about the brakes other than the fact that the, this car is going to be going very, very fast and needs all of that to stop it. Yeah. The darn, yes, sir. Is that a carbon fiber composite? That's what yes, that is? Yes, okay. that is exactly And we're looking at V6. Yep. Uh, how many speed transmission? Nine. Nine speed. Nine speed. Nine speed transmission. Okay, very nice. And over 550 horsepower, correct? Over 550. Okay. It's assisted by three motors, uh, uh, electrical motors. And uh, from what I understand, it goes like stink. Uh, so you haven't driven it yet? Well, I have, but yeah. uh, I have not been taken by the test driver. The, the oh, okay. I, I want right. to. I want to experience what they're telling me. And so. Well, the thing I find fascinating is gestation periods in this car has been a long time because I remember the, the engine was uh, longitudinal, and they. I mean, they. It's, it's been a clean sheet of paper like two times, right? Well, it started out with the transverse engine, right. and we already got going on that. Right. And I remember in the design studio, we, we had it all figured out, all the lines figured out. Right. And everybody decided that's not good enough. Uh, yeah. We got to turn the engine, stick turbos on this thing, and let's get this horsepower. Right. Where it and of course, make it a hybrid as well. Yes. Yeah. So, Because Jerry Seinfeld and I did a commercial in the Super Bowl a few years ago. <laughs> yes. And did. part of our deal was we don't want any money, we want to have the first <laughs> car number one and two. So I think I'm going to go for the red. I like the, you like the red? You know, okay. the red, normally I don't because it's too obvious, but that's got a nice this maroon is, uh, to yeah, it. Yeah, this is a very special red. It's Valencia red. Yeah. Uh, it's very beautiful. Yes. Very nice interior. Yeah, it's yeah. very form-fitting. Uh, yeah. It's a driver's car. Uh, it's, it goes back to what the NSX was in the past. It's a true driver's yeah. car. The, the interesting thing here is that we started with a smaller engine. Right. So the original concept car, this whole piece was a little bit smaller. Right. But now that we got the horsepower, we got everything going, now we have this very dramatic big uh, line that we wanted to start out with. And if you know, notice the airflow is right through underneath this. Uh, I got you, yeah. And uh, it's all stuff that we draw and sketch, but we, we figure, you know, somewhere in feasibility or something might go away. But it's here, it's functional, it leads the air into the rear spoiler. And We're how many liters are we looking at? 3.5. 3.5 liter, okay. 3.5 liter V6 okay. twin turbo. So it's the same size as like the McLaren, but a V6 rather than a V8. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's a nice looking car. I have to admit, the first go around a couple of years ago didn't really knock me out. Okay. But I, I do like this one. It's a nice looking car. Right. Now it's, it's accurate here, but the rest of the world it's Honda, correct? We're, we're fighting to make sure that it's accurate everywhere, oh, but uh, okay. that's not for us to decide yet. Uh, but uh, we is are Acura proud. a brand in Europe? No, it's not. Sure. Okay, so yeah. it's okay. So we're proud of the uh, North American heritage with Acura. Right. Acura is a interesting brand. It's a Japanese uh, uh, company, but our brand is built out here in North America, and that's yeah. why we decided to make the car here and design so the car. It's designed here. and built in Ohio, correct? Uh, designed in Torrance. Uh, oh, our Torrance. students okay. in Torrance, California, but oh, uh, cool. the manufacturing and uh, development is all done in Ohio. Yes. Sir. Okay. Well, it's a good looking car. Well, we don't have any top speed figures or anything like that yet. No. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. So, when will this car be out? When will it be available? I, I guess so, my question is when am I getting mine? <laughs> Uh, we're going to have to talk to the big boss about that All one. Right, we'll but, talk to uh, yeah, All but, right, we'll uh, I'm going to go now and find the big boss. Okay, John, thank you very yeah, much. Thank you so really much. Really appreciate it. Nice yeah, thank job. Thank you so much. Nice, nice to meet you. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. This is uh, Brandon Cote. He's with Mercedes AMG. Uh, you know, I used to work for Mercedes a long time ago when I was in college. Mm -hmm. And AMG at that point was still basically a tuner. Yeah. Now they've become a full-fledged manufacturer. And I remember the, the initials of the... Two names in a town, but I, well, what other names? <laughs> yeah, so the A is Alfrecht, the M is Melcher, and the G is the hometown of Alfrecht, which is Grossenpach. Okay, see, I couldn't even repeat that now, so I'm just going to say <laughs> AMG. AMG. And the one, the one reason we're here at the Mercedes AMG tent today is the car that started it all for AMG is here. This is a car, I'm a huge fan of the 6.3 Mercedes. It's one of my favorite cars. When I used to do uh, new car prep at Mercedes-Benz, whenever I had to polish one and put the license plates on it, I just thought it was the greatest car in the world. I always remember that famous shot of the 6.3 going around that test track at Mercedes. Yeah, the huge bank corner, yeah. With you, and I got to drive that bank corner once, so that was really exciting. But let's take a look at the car that started all for AMG and made them what they are today. See, this appealed to me because this is uh, an era that I like when you took basically a stock car mm -hmm. and you made a racing car out of it. Exactly. I always liked something that looked like something I could buy or drive. 
And the other thing I liked about this car is it looked like something an American would do. Absolutely. Take the bumpers off, flare the flare fenders. fenders. It didn't seem German at all to me because the Germans are all about like the gull wing, it's all flowing lines. And, and to take this car and modify it with the big, I just thought it was like the coolest thing. Yeah, well, I think that's really because the car was made by engineers, right? It wasn't made right. by designers, it was made by engineers who wanted to take this vehicle, wanted to be in racing. And Mercedes didn't want to really be in racing at the time. So that's why they left Alfred de Meltzer right. to start AMG. Well, tell me about this. So you got a bunch of AMG guys, they take a beautiful Mercedes sedan, they make it look like this. They show it to the corporate guys, which of course in 71 were very conservative because they didn't want to build the 6.3 in the first place. They Correct. thought it was too crazy. So how did they, how did they <laughs> sell this? So it's kind of an interesting story. You know, as I said, they left the company because they, they wanted to be in racing. Right. And they bought the car, the original 300 SEL, uh, 6.3 liter mm -hmm. from the company, and they completely retuned it. They bored out the motor to make it a 6.8 liter, right. lightened the vehicle up, and brought it to racing. Right, okay. Can we open the hood and see what it looks yeah, like? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Do you want to help grab that? Yeah, I'll that? get these. Go ahead. Oh, the whole thing opens from the whole thing. thing. Oh, wow, it Pretty looks cool, basically stock, yeah. You've even got the air suspension, compressor, and everything on exactly. it. Exactly. Still have all of that, Bosch injectors. And they race with the air springs, huh? Yeah. Back in the day, okay, cool. Yeah, it looks like a stock 6.3, but like a uh, smoky unit car, it's, it's been poured out to 6.8. You know, I got a chance to uh, visit the AMG factory in Germany. Yeah, you're telling me. Yeah, and it's really, well, it didn't seem much bigger than this building at the time. I mean, I mean, they were building the engines right there. You could sort of watch each man put together. And say, well, here, take a look, see what I'm talking about. I know the stock horsepower was 250. What was this once it was? 428. 428, okay. Yeah, so pretty impressive. That was a lot in 1971. That was a hell of a lot in 1971. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. All right. And what's really amazing, I mean, so this vehicle made its debut in 1972 at the 24 Hours of Spa. Biggest car there. Uh, a lot of people, that's how it got the nickname the Red Pig. Right. Uh, but finished the race first in its class and second overall. So yeah. that's what really put us on the map. Very impressive. And the fun thing is it kept all the wood trim. And I mean, it's basically a stock car that's been modified. It's been modified. Yeah. I mean, the tires are enormous. No sunroof. You don't need that. But Who needs uh, that? Nicely done. So now, okay, AMG was always a tuner company for Mercedes up until when? So up until the late 90s right. when Mercedes purchased a minority interest in us. Okay. And then in 2005, we became a wholly owned subsidiary of Mercedes-Benz. Okay. So at this point, we still maintain all of our own R&D and, and engine manufacturing processes. Right. But now, instead of taking a vehicle like this and having to retrofit and retune the vehicle, right. we can design, design the vehicle alongside Mercedes. Right, and, and AMG is considered a separate manufacturer in Germany now, isn't it? Not the, of the entire vehicle. So the right. chassis and everything are still built by Mercedes. Right. Um, but we build our engines by the one man, one engine philosophy. So right. that's all done in our factory in Falterbach, where you have one master engine builder who takes the engine from engine block, right. puts every nut, every bolt, every cylinder, every electrical harness on it until finished completion. And then they sign it and put their signature on the top of the engines. Now, you have a new car they just released. This is not their first sports car. That's correct, it's uh, our second. This is the second sports car. The first one was very successful. Tell me yep. about the second one. Yeah, so the new one we just launched is the AMG GTS. Mm -hmm. It's an absolutely phenomenal vehicle. Uh, it features a 4.0 liter bi-turbo V8. It's right. the first production engine that uses hot inside V. So the exhaust ports of the cylinders actually go directly into the intake turbines of the turbos sitting right inside the V okay. with dry sump lubrication. Okay. So what we did is typically the turbos sit on the outside of the cylinder okay, bank. So what right. we do is we move them both on the inside. Oh, I gotcha, okay. Yep. And now we you want to get reverse close, the intake. You and get the, less lag the closer you are yeah, to the actual No tubing between the, the two. I see. Exactly. Oh, very cool. All and right. we've achieved a great weight distribution of 53% in the rear, 47% in the front. So great weight distribution, a little bit heavier in the rear because you're better handling on the track. Yeah. And four liter is smaller than the previous engine, isn't it? It is, it is smaller. So the previous engine was the 6.2 liter. Right. Now we're at a 4.0 liter, but we're putting out 503 horsepower. And what were you putting out, out before? 577. Oh, okay. But this car being a lighter car, more nimble? Much more nimble, yeah. Okay. And it's, and it's a little less expensive than the other car. It's it? a little less expensive. So yeah. this vehicle puts us in a segment we've never competed in before, okay. really. Uh, so starting price is 129.9, and oh, that's a okay. sports car segment we've never really competed so in. So now you're competing against Carrera, 911, um, even, even the 
top level Corvette. It's close to that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So we're really excited. Uh, you know, the SLS this was over 200,000. Right. Uh, and this is a segment that's a very competitive segment. There's a lot of strong competition, a right. lot of legacy in this segment. Right. And uh, we think it's time for another competitor. Well, let's go take a look at the car and see what it looks like. Well, it's a great looking car. Is this a 16 or a 15? Uh, 16. Okay. Yeah. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It is. The proportions it's very on it. They, they've done away with the gull wing door. That was just for a short while. It was. And we actually get a much better lower center of gravity because of that. Yeah. And you've also got uh, less weight, too. A lot less weight. So we've shaved off uh, a couple inches in both the front and the rear of the car compared to the SLS, dropped the center of gravity, dropped a few hundred pounds. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, for the price point, you know, I, the interesting thing, anybody would guess it's 210, two and a quarter. I'm not going to guess 129. No, not at all. And it's 129 isn't bare bones either. It comes very well equipped standard. A yeah. um, lot of choices to customize the vehicle as well. Yeah, yeah. So you can personalize it. So it's, uh, okay, four liter engine, which is actually pretty small. And, but it's got what, 503? 503. 503. And how many speed transmission? Seven speed, and this features a dual clutch transmission. It is a dual clutch. And Very it's nice. a transaxle, so we have the engine up front, right. completely behind the front axle, right. so it's the front mid engine. Uh, we connect the two with a carbon fiber drive shaft. Okay. So this is what would be called a front mid engine car. Because most cars, at least cars up until fairly recently, the engine in the front was right up here. Your radiator was here, your engine was right here. So majority of weight was hanging over the front axle. Yeah, very nose heavy. Now your, your engine starts here, so it's it's not in the middle of the car, but it's closer to the middle than the front. So that would be front mid-engine as opposed exactly. to a rear engine car. I personally happen to like front engine cars myself. I just like the way they handle, especially road cars. I mean, racing track cars, you know, rear engine works probably best for that. But for a good road car, I, I like this kind of setup. And in that classic AMG Mercedes tradition, it's signed by, who is that, what's that guy's name? So this one is by Sven Seafray. Sven, so if anything goes wrong, <laughs> Sven. We got your yeah. name. Very good, okay, nicely done, nicely done. I always so, like Mercedes because the hood opens straight up, you can actually get in the car. This is what I hate when you nice, have it. It's nice, isn't it? How does this come down? You just just uh, nice, and, nice and pull hard, there okay, you go. Thanks. I hate when you have to do this, and you get into there. You hit your head. Yeah, okay, just pull it down. Nice, okay. Nice, isn't it? It is nice. What kind of torque are you looking at on this car? Uh, 479. Okay, that's pretty good. And red line is where? Uh, 7,000 RPMs. Okay. Okay. So, you actually have some usable space back there. Is this a hatch? It is a hatch. That's how we get that beautiful slope line. Yeah. Nice, good, usable space. Yeah, and it's, and it's a proper two-seater car. There's no phony bony <laughs> kind of back seat in the back. Of it. No, not at all. It kind of all comes together to this nice finishing line in the rear end. Great aerodynamics. Yeah, it's nicely done. Let's uh, let's take it for a ride and see how it goes. Well, I must say there's no absence of quality, you know, dumbing down because it's $80,000 or $90,000 less than the car that came before it. I mean, that's pretty smart. I mean, it, I think if you're a Mercedes buyer, this looks like, oh, wow, I just saved 80 grand. <laughs> it's, it's lighter and it's a real sports car, like a 911, isn't it? It absolutely is. I hope we don't upset too many of our SLS customers. And, you know, in a straight line, the SLS is still a faster car. Right. But this is just so much, so much more nimble, and the yeah. interior design and refinement is second to none. Now we have what we have. So we have comfort, sport, sport plus, and race. And what's mode. that first one? The first one is I for individual. That's if you want, you know, a stiff suspension, but a, a soft steering wheel okay. and a medium suspension. Okay. And now let's put it in sport. Plus, and that makes your exhaust a little throatier, correct? Exactly. So when you go to Sport Plus, we can now bypass the muffler. Ninety-five percent of the exhaust goes right straight through the pipes. It's a great note, isn't it? It is. Sounds wonderful. We've got a seven thousand RPM red line on this thing. Now, when I start to use the manual shifters, am I in manual forever? No. So that's a good point. So it's good to adapt to your driving style. So you're going to drive aggressively, it'll stay in manual longer. But after about 60 seconds, it'll go back to drive. Okay. Now if we hit this M button right here, right. it'll stay in manual and will not go out. I see. Okay. Well, that's good to know. 
Well, there's the old pagoda. Look at that. There's an oh, old that's SL. Fantastic. You know, I always liked those, but I always felt like I was driving a sedan with the rear seats out of it. <laughs> you know, because the SL to me was. I mean, it's a comfortable car. It was a nice touring car. Sure. But it wasn't a proper sports car. No, and that's what this is. This yeah. is a proper sports car. The Pagodas have really come up in value, too. Yeah, that's what I started on. I started on with Pagodas when I was uh, working at the Mercedes dealership. Nice six-cylinder, and you had that four-speed automatic, and they're very dependable. That was, that was their race in the hole, you know. Other sports exactly. cars were sports car dependable you know they sometimes they ran sometimes they didn't but mercedes always was uh always reliable absolutely it does feel light what does the car weigh uh so we're under 3500 pounds oh it is under yeah, so it's an aluminum space frame oh, okay predominantly all aluminum construction with some carbon fiber elements and do they still sell the SL, uh no SLS? so that vehicle's retired okay uh, Model year 15 was the last year of that vehicle. We did a final edition. Right. A very small run of that vehicle. Uh, that vehicle's now retired. And this now re not replaces it because it's a brand new segment for us, but this is our yeah. new sports car. Yeah. I expect to see a lot of variants of this car in coming years. I would imagine, yeah. Now, the race mode gives you that even quicker throttle response and it goes to sport handling mode with the ESP. It has a, a great amount of acceptance of the road when you're going in a straight line. Nearly yeah. no body roll going around corners. No, no. It's an incredible job with suspension. Because it's adapting, it's using the gyroscope to the vehicle to determine whether are you going in a straight line and want some more travel, right. or are you going around a corner and need that stiffer outside. Right. It also has dynamic engine and transmission mounts. So we can stiffen and soften the mounts on the engine transmission. And when you're making a hard left, we'll stiffen up the right side mounts, right. soften the left one so we can actually help steer the car with the mount, mounts yeah. as well. Here comes a tucker. Oh, wow. You don't see a lot of tuckers on the road. That's the great thing about Pebble Beach. Zero to 60 on this car is 3.7 seconds. That's not bad. So that's what we publish. Yeah. Trouble is, we're in Pebble Beach. Where you, is besides a million cars on the road up here for Pebble Beach Week, there's like like there's a police officer like every 50 feet, so you really can't uh, kind of put your foot in it. But you get the idea what it's like to drive. The car feels incredibly nimble. It's much lighter than the uh, than the previous generation cars. Absolutely. And it's like 80 or 90 thousand dollars less expensive. You know, it's actually kind of an interesting story. The lead engineer on this vehicle, uh, who was responsible for developing the vehicle, just a couple of years ago was promoted to the CEO of the company. Right. So now, you know, he's the gentleman who designed and engineered the vehicle. Now he gets to actually bring it to market as right. the CEO. Of about 1,100 employees we have at AMG, yeah. over 700 of them are engineers. Yeah. So we're a true engineer and design company. Well, I want to thank Brandon and AMG for showing us this guy. You know, it's nice to talk to somebody who's well-informed. We've talked to some people up here this week, and they didn't know anything about their vehicles. It's a little frustrating. So the fact that you know the torque specifications and the history of the company, I'm sorry we really couldn't take this out and really put it through its paces, but it's very crowded here at Pebble Beach, and uh, there's only a few of these, and they want to protect them. So uh, the fact that we got to drive it all is a real treat. Brandon, thank you very much. Thanks, Jay. I really appreciate and, uh, your time. Thanks to the guys at AMG, and thanks for letting me visit the factory that time. That was a lot of fun. See you guys later.